What do you think about using a loud top water for the reaction bite instead of what they're feeding on? It's worked for me about 50% of the time and a little more when it really shouldn't be a top water bite. So he's using something just to call them up, something loud. Or do you like the, like when you throw all those baits you were talking about, how many of those have rattles in them? Or do you like the silent kind of approach? Uh, it depends on what the, what the water conditions like the, mm -hmm. the, you know, if I got a real windy day, yeah, I mean, throw something out there clanging and banging. If it's uh, slicked off, you know, throw something more subtle. You know, that little clear bait. That's when I throw bait. it clear. Yep, yep, yep. But, uh, you know, that would be my starting point. Of course, if it was a, you know, I mean, you have these unicorn days to where it's like, oh, my God, it's slick. It's going to be hard. And they just freaking eat every freaking top water thing you throw at them. Um, usually times like that would be like when that little cyclone bill went by us, or what was it, Debbie? Like the hurricane, yeah, okay. what, tropical well, depression after you, you got out here? fishing during that day, I would have, I wasn't out during that day because my boat was in the shop, but Imagine I was out that day, uh -huh. dude, I would have been looking for top water bike to be on fire that day. Um, I know, uh. What was it last year? That big hurricane went up the east coast, and we had like the eight foot rollers on the near. That stupid, crazy day on the near. I fished. Uh, I got a buddy that comes up here and goes fishing with me uh, from the Three Rivers area down there, Tracy. Um, I think it was a good thing he was with me that day because anybody else would have probably crapped on a boat. <laughs> so he was used ways, to it. He was like, used to it. Yeah, that day. Uh, but dude, we caught the ever I don't know how many fish we caught that day. It was insane. On top water. Every stinking one of them, dude. I mean, really, you could have probably caught them on whatever you wanted to throw. I mean, we were throwing like sabils and top waters and stuff like that. I mean, we caught them. I mean, it was insane. In the rough water. Yep. In the rough water, and not just the rough water, but the low barometer that that system is that where you where you grinning at over there? Yep. That's some of the best days. I, that, was, that was the day it snowed on us at Rayburn. We were catching two at a time on a three eight ounce trout. When when Ooh, something when that, like that gets close proximity bro. to us, like if it's over here off of the east coast, you better go out there and throw. A top water at them fish, dude, because you're going to have a good day. Okay. There That's go. going to be a fun time. Uh, we might have answered this earlier, but Surf Dad, uh, do you use a steady retrieve or a stop and go slight jerk with the underspin? And he's on Alatoona again, but like when you're on Lanier. Uh, so, I mean, from day to day, I mean, some days you can sit there and reel the thing slow and they'll, they'll uh, what's Rick saying right there? Go, <laughs> go ahead, ahead and say it. it. Stupid. Shit, I can say it. It's so, <laughs> Rick, you can. I, I own this podcast. You can spell it out, buddy. I mean, I won't tell on you at church. Yeah, we, me and him got like a joke. We call it we can't catch him on that stupid shit. Oh, listen, <laughs> uh, but when uh, it does, it makes sense. Hey, but it makes sense. It makes so much sense because that's the interaction that they really have with that food, with their food source. It's not here. I mean, look, it's right on his nose. Why ain't he eating this? He's sitting there looking at it. Shake it some more and see if he'll eat it. You know what? Maybe if I reel it and pop it a little bit, maybe he'll eat it. You know what? If you burn that thing across his face, he'll eat it because that's what's really going on. Yeah. The bait fish is trying to escape with his life. That's what's going on. Makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes perfect what's sense. Going on. Are we going to have any top water bites? I mean, will we be throwing top water on Gunnersville we, next month? Yeah, we might throw some. Uh, I know we're going to throw What's the difference in top water on Gunnersville as compared to Lanier? And you fish both of them, so you should know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whoever's in the boat with me on Saturday, we'll, pro we'll probably start. I got one look, section look right of right Which one? I told you. Clarence? I hammered them on the that Monday. Walker. Debbie came through on a cane walker. Do you yeah. know how obnoxious a cane walker is? Yeah. That's a, I, I got some. Pencil poppers. You yeah. probably got some. I do. I got, I got some cane walkers over there. Yeah. It's loud. Um, yeah. We, whoever's in the boat with me, we're going to start, actually start back over my house. And yeah. then we're going to buzz bait. Um, but we're going to skip it up under a dock. 
like way up under. Well, hell, I don't need to be in your boat because I can't right. skip worth um, the crap. <laughs> but I mean, the, here's the thing: I sure as hell can't skip a buzz bait. It all up there. It, it's it, we don't have the problems that we have. We have a problem up there that we don't have on Lanier, and it's water clarity. So the times I've gotten on it really, really good, we ran into it some this past summer. I pulled up in Sea Bold, and it literally looked like Lanier. It was that clear. I could see four or five foot down and they, I was throwing a jaywalker and they were crushing it. But there's a couple of things. It's got to be clear or, and, or you can't have the grass in there with it. That's the key. Now we can go up there and go frog fishing, call that top water fishing. We can do that or throw something up around the grass. But Man, I want to go do that. Come on. You know, we, we know a guy. Hey, wait a second. We do have a spare. We have one more. We do have a spot. We do have an open spot. And we got enough boats. And we got the boats. You ain't even got to bring your boat. But I, will, I like frog fishing. Too. Come on. Well, come on with us and you get to eat good. He's going to cook. I was, up, I was up the river throwing a frog the other day, just trying to find a frog. I caught some frog fish on the near, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, there, there are guys. You don't want to know where I was at <laughs> doing it, though. Was you up dirt shallow? Yeah. Uh, so, was you, uh, did, how about let me this? Ask you this? North you, end of the lake or, or south? I mean, way freaking north. Okay, you was up. Like, we weren't too far from Belt and Bridge. Mm. <laughs> he was way up to Chattahoochee then. See, I, I've you know where, up Hague, you know where Hagen Creek is? Hagen Creek is up above Lula Bridge. See, I, I just know I that's had, north. I hadn't been that far that way. I've been on the, the Chesapeake side. Whatever. Been up above the bridge. I've been up to where it says, there are. there's a big sign that says, there are rocks. Stop. Oh, you can go and bass that, man. Don't <laughs> Run on up there. The hell with the warning sign in your yeah, boat. Don't worry about that, man. I need we'll to keep my boat, boat running. We'll fix your boat. We'll You're like, no your wonder boat. yours is in the shop. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not from hitting rocks. <laughs> but so, but Belton Bridge, that's way up to Chattahoochee. Way the heck. Okay. Way up there. You're getting almost in the shoal bass territory up in that way, ain't you? You, well, you got a little farther to go. I think you got farther to go than me. But you still on a frog. I know, guys. I, Rob Jordan throws a popper, frog on a there. A popper and a frog. A black one. A black one. And that's then, right. And then a black one. And then a black one. And then a black one. one. No, yes. Did you see that? Rob Jordan I, was asking him. I, I, I didn't watch all of that. Well, I, I watched some of that. I asked him what color frog, and he said a black one. And then I'll throw a black one. And then I'll throw a black one. Now, it, what color frog were you throwing there, Kevin? So I was a uh, bluegill kind of dude. Okay. I was looking for brim eaters, and uh, I was throwing – a popper that has a bluegill pattern on it, and I was throwing a frog. It's not black. It's not white. It's kind of a, it's kind of a brim color. Yeah. Just you know, it's it's a it's a one that's painted up like a brim, really. Okay. It, that it makes looks sense. Like a brim. Oh, Michael Temples. He was up here at the shop today. Just got done installing his new fridge. When you go in, oh, I, yeah, he's gonna let Trent install that graph. So he got him, a, he got him a nice new graph too. Oh yeah. If anybody's in the market for a 12 inch uh garment i might know a guy that might have one mm. guess what size he got he got those 16. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna he go look nice on that what size graph you run i just run 12. Six, I was, uh, boy, I mean, i'd get me a recliner sitting up there a 16 inch screen so i got to do i did a trip with a fella that had one of them 22 inch battleship mbts good lord yes <clears throat> uh what was that like? Well, I realized how far that thing can see out. Because <laughs> you got God Almighty. Well, I mean, uh, setting up the graph, I put my usual, hey, this is the way I set mine up. And then, you know. You were fixing his. Yes. Yeah, you were setting it up yeah, for him. I, okay. set, I, set, I set up the settings, and uh, we set it up. And we were looking at stuff, and, man, the pound and a halfers were looking like six-pound fish. I was like, saw them man, extra pixels. This is uh, yeah. okay. Let's run this thing on out there and see if we can get this stuff into proportion, dude. We were running the forward out to 160 feet and running the depth on it to like 70 80 feet that day, really, just to get to, and dude, you were seeing stuff as clean and clear as it could be. And I got to give Trent Palmer props on that, dude. Every time. I've been on a boat with something that he's installed. It's usually jam up. Dude. It's the best. He's the best. It's jam up, man. He does a good job with it. Not not only not only with the graph installations, the the part of parts of it too that that I've seen on people's boats is 
is the way that he lays stuff out for everything to fit in there is is pretty dadgum good. It's clean, it's neat, 